Insurance companies have a lot of challenges transforming generally. Uh, and as a result, there's come an expectation of what insurance companies will need to do to support this transformation. Now at Novarica, we've kind of created a framework to understand these transformations that literally cut across data, digital, and core. And these capabilities, data, digital, and core, cover all of the uh, parts of the insurance value chain. When I talk about the insurance value chain, I'm talking about product development, marketing, distribution, underwriting, customer engagement, billing, claims, and finance and operations. And so we're seeing new capabilities across that value chain in all of the elements covering data, digital, and core. With all the data produced, cybersecurity may become a key element in the insurance world. Is that right? Well, it already is. There's a number of regulations out there that are requiring CISOs uh, and requiring alignment to state regulations. Uh, you know, when we think about CISOs, going back 10, 15 years ago, many insurance carriers didn't even have CISOs, Chief Information Security Officers. Today, uh, some of them still don't have full-time CISOs. Others have designated CIOs as CISOs. Some have designated non-CIOs, uh, executives as CISOs. Some have designated experts. But it's important to have the CISOs because in many cases, the regulations are requiring the CISOs to exist and to attest to state regulatory authorities like the Department of Financial Services in New York State. What will be done to fight against hackers? Well, as we have more connectivity, as we have more digital products, as we come to rely almost 100% on computer technology, we need to worry about the security of the data we collect and we need to protect against it. And so, you know, I think carriers are doing a good job. Uh, uh, right now, about 11% actually of IT budgets are designated to support security. Uh, some of the major things that we're seeing are device security, application security, intrusion detection, data encryption, um, security audits, uh, the deployment of the NIST framework, and then finally SSE CMM, which is probably the least deployed of all of the things. Do you think today's technology is ready for the challenge? Well, it's a great question. You know, on some levels, I think the carriers are fairly well prepared. Security operations they've been doing for a number of years now, so things like incident response, business continuity and DR, uh, access controls, uh, network monitoring. Uh, you know, it's being done fairly well. Capacity and performance planning, maybe not so much. But if we think about other elements of the problem, for example, governance, there I think the carriers have a lot of opportunity to improve, particularly around data governance processes and classification, vendor management, customer data privacy, and then finally risk management and assessment. What role will new technologies such as artificial intelligence, virtual and augmented reality, machine learning, and IoT play in the insurance industry in the future? You know, it's an interesting question. When we think about all of these cool types of technologies, people think, oh my God, the world is going to change. Well, it's not going to change, but they're going to augment what we have today. We've already seen this with predictive analytics, where the utilization of that type of technology across books of insurance has been vastly increased over the last few years. And the sophistication and complexity of the modeling techniques have only improved over the last five to 10 years. We're seeing uh, continued use of single scoring uh, in underwriting, and we're seeing the coupling now with machine learning uh, to get a better outcome. With big data, we're seeing the growth of uh, data repositories like Hadoop and NoSQL technologies uh, to manage more and more enterprise data, which is both external data as well as internal data. Um, all of a sudden now we can handle high volumes, high variabilities, uh, high velocity, not so much yet, but we're moving into that. And as we think about life and annuity and we think about big data, we're seeing that more and more data is being collected and we're seeing more and more pilots with it, uh, particularly for the development of operational data stores and the sourcing of data warehouses.